This morning, we can report for the first time that over the last five years, 120 children under the age of 15 who identify as being transgender have had NHS treatment to pause their puberty. Called puberty blockers, they effectively stop a child developing breasts or growing facial hair. We've been talking exclusively to one of the youngest ever children to have this treatment. Jason is now 10, but he began it at nine after he started female puberty. It's rare to have puberty blockers at that age. The Tavistock Clinic, which is the UK's only NHS gender identity clinic for under 18s, has told this programme that the youngest child they've ever treated is 10 and a half years of age. I've been speaking to Jason and his mum, Leanne. Jason, I wonder if I could ask you, first of all, what do you remember about when you were treated as a girl and had a girl's name? Um, well, I was treated like any other, anyone else was, um, but I just didn't feel like the same as everyone else, so I felt different and I felt that I, I was a boy and I am a boy and no one else really saw that until I said, pretty much, mm. yeah. Do you know why you felt different to other girls? Um, I felt like a boy trapped in a girl's body and it just really didn't feel right. It was horrible. I came home, I think it was pretty much every day I came home from school crying because I didn't know how to explain it and I didn't know how to, like, tell people about it. And what was it like for you, Leanne? Um, it was very upsetting to see your child upset, obviously, mm -hmm. and not knowing what to do about it, especially from a young age. We didn't know whether it was a phase, whether it was, a, you know, a gay tendency thing, that he was acting more boyish than other girls. Um, mm -hmm. But as it grew on and on and on and he got more upset, I just knew we had to do something. And like you say, when the teacher approached us, I knew something had to be done. So the school approached you and said, I wonder if there might be some issues around... They were supposed to be filling identity. in a national form, a standard form, saying about your body, if you're happy in your own skin, and Jason couldn't fill it in properly and walked out of the classroom crying his eyes out. So when the teacher approached me at the end of the day, she pulled me to one side and said, he couldn't fill in the form and there's no girl characteristics whatsoever. So, of course, I had these thoughts myself, whether it was a gender thing or not. So as soon as she said it, I just... Obviously, I burst into tears at the time. I was just thinking, right, we need to do something now. We need to get some help. And from what age has your little girl been saying to you, I don't feel like a girl? Um, in the early days, about three and four, it wasn't actually saying didn't want to be a girl, no. but refusing to wear girls' clothes. And since after about a year, we couldn't handle it anymore. We thought, right, we've got to give in now. Mm. Just wear whatever you want. If it's a phase, you'll grow out of it, whatever. Mm. So it was more the actions than words. The words came probably about five, six, possibly. Um, and just explaining he wasn't happy in his own skin. He was upset. Why did I say he was pretty and lovely? Just didn't feel right. Wanted to be a boy. I think on the Christmas list, it was a magic potion to turn you into a boy. Really? Yeah. And how was your husband reacting? Um, he didn't tend to get involved in all that at the time because he just thought it was me being silly, it was a phase, mm. and just dismissive of, dismissive of it, really. Mm. But it's only after Jason watched the programme I Am Leo and we had to tell him basically the whole story then, this is what it is. And he's been brilliant ever since, I must say. He's been really understanding. Jason, so you watched I Am Leo, didn't you? This yeah. children's BBC programme. Tell me what that was like when you were watching it. It just felt amazing because cause I thought I was practically the only one in the world who was, like, who I am. And then watching that video, it filled me with, like, relief and joy, and it was amazing. Mm. And what our audience can't see is that when you said, fill me with joy, you've got a great big smile on your face, which is lovely to see. How big a decision was it for you, Leanne, and your husband to allow Jason to start having these monthly injections which effect effectively pause female puberty? They're known as hormone blockers. Well, at the time, obviously, we had to look into it to know what side effects there would be. Um, apparently, there wasn't any side effects at this stage because his hormone levels weren't as high 
and it's only when they're stopped, then they drop, then you get side effects, is what we understand. Um, but to see the upset in him up until this point, we thought that we can't possibly let him carry on developing anymore, because it'll do more harm than good. So you were upset, Jason, were you, that your, your body was becoming more woman womanly? Yeah, I was getting um, really, really upset because I just, that's not me, it's like not who I am and I wanted to get something done about it, stop it ha from happening. And you were age nine then? Yes. Which is, which is young, Leanne, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's young for the onset of female puberty, but it's young for you to make that decision. Yeah, because it's not just the hormone blockers, it's the story then of do you harvest eggs for child, you know, having a child later on in life. Wow. So we had to talk to him about that. Mm. Unfortunately, he was developing earlier than most girls at that stage as well, so that's why the pressure was on for us. Um, but, yeah, what can you do? And so you investigated this possibility on the NHS, couldn't go down the NHS route because... Well, the waiting list, we, in Wales we have to see CAMS first. Which is the Ch Child Ch Adolescent Mental Health Services. Yeah. yeah. So we were on the waiting list for that for about 15 months. Mm. So then after that, I know the waiting list now for Tavistock, because we've got to be funded from Wales to get to Tavistock. That's the NHS Gender Identity Clinic? Yes. And I think the waiting list for that is another two to three years. So you went privately? So how can we wait that long? It'd be he'd be devastated, mm. whether then there would be self-harm, getting involved, which there are with some children, and other possible worse side effects of that. I just mm. couldn't take the risk. Mm. Couldn't do it. So you have an injection every month, Jason, at the yeah. top of your bottom, I think, isn't it? Yeah. What's that like for you? It hurts, but it's like, it's amazing, because I know where this <clears throat> pours in my hormones, so I don't um, start developing as a girl which is amazing it's, I didn't even think it was really possible uh, at the start but then when I found out it was just I was just absolutely amazed it was it was amazing what this pause on female puberty does effectively is give you a lot of time now to really think about what you want to do in the future doesn't it yes it does. do you think at this stage at the age of 10 you do you think you want to carry on living as a boy? Definitely, because if I was to carry on living as a girl, I don't think I, I could do it. I just, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't let anyone see me. I probably wouldn't um, come out of my room. I'd just stay you in my room. You wouldn't come out of your bedroom? It's a big decision for a ten-year-old. Yeah. There will be some people watching, Leanne, who say, too young, mm. far too young to be pausing female puberty. Could be a phase, could be all those things that we hear when we, when we talk about transgender children and to transgender children. What do you say? Well, basically, um, unless you live with somebody who's done it, grown from an early age, the age of three or four, we've seen it, we've seen phases of it, he hasn't come out of it, he's so clear and concise in what he wants, We've told him if he, wants, if he changes his mind, he can always talk to us, we can always come off the hormone blockers. Mm -hmm. So that, I don't think, is doing anything wrong at all. Um, if then, when he gets to 13 or 14, and then we do discuss the cross-sex hormones, mm -hmm. the injections, then I think by the time he's that age, he'll definitely know. And the cross-sex hormones are... They're not available on the NHS until somebody is 16, but you're considering potentially this might be something you would do before the age of 16. Yeah, just to help your child fit in and be as a normal child growing up at that stage. And for Jason, that would mean testosterone. Yeah. And that, those hormones are irreversible. Yeah. Yeah. It is a massive decision for a parent to take, but it's not something they go into lightly. Well, I just think that he's so keen and eager to become a man, basically. Well, not a man at this stage, obviously, but a, a boy. Mm. That obviously the, the testosterone is so important to him and he has even discussed further surgeries later on down the line as well that's how adamant he is that's what he wants to be mm. and i think it's really hard for a parent or anybody on the outside looking in to understand that they are trapped in the wrong body mm. and that is how they feel mm. and it's like torture to them every day but most days 
I mean, he's got a busy life. He has lots of friends, lots of sports. Everybody's been amazing. His family are great. Mm -hmm. So he's doing well at the moment, mm -hmm. and long may that continue. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the reaction of your wider family to what's happening with your little boy. Um, most people are not that surprised because they've either thought something themselves or they've just all been amazing and so supportive because he hasn't actually changed as a person. He's mm -hmm. still the same person, still got the same likes and dislikes. It's just, he's a boy. Yeah. And you said a little earlier that your, your husband, Jason's dad, sort of dismissed it earlier on yeah. and left, left it to you in a way. Now? Oh, amazing. He is so supportive. And, um, yeah, he's just, he's just there for you, isn't he, Chase? Yeah. So he's, no, he's, he's come a long way, because I didn't think he'd be able to cope with it. Like most men, they don't cope with things the same as women, do they? <laughs> and what about your little bro? He's been amazing with it. He's, he? Ever since we told him, he hasn't really made a mistake. And he corrects people all the time if they do make a mistake. You mean in terms of whether they say he or she right. or whatever name they use? Mm. He has been brilliant. Mm. The first morning, mind, he did wake up. And the first thing he said to me was, Mum, what am I on the inside? Oh. I know. I said, well, obviously you're a boy. What am I on the outside? I said, well, what do you think? <laughs> but no, he's been so good, considering he was only four. Mm. He's been brilliant. Mm. But he idolises Jason anyway, so he's just his hero, whatever. Mm. Jason, thank you so much for talking to us. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you. What, do you, what are your hopes for the future? What would you say? Um, I that um, I'd say it. Be a footballer, of course. Do you? <laughs> Who would you play for? Um, Man United. Of course you would play for Manchester United. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Jason. Thank you. Jason, age 10, speaking about his own experiences of being transgender and starting treatment to stop him from going through female puberty. It's worth pointing out that Jason's dad and head teacher of Jason's school both support the boy speaking publicly about his experiences of being transgender. Jason and his family don't want to hide who they are, they say. We decided, because of Jason's age, not to show their faces. Let me read some messages from you. Helen says, incredibly brave of Leanne and Jason to talk so honestly about their experiences. Kayla says this, though, pausing puberty, question mark. This is just kids wanting their own way. I was a tomboy growing up, and now I'm a girly girl. Jamie says, the child can't even vote, but yet we will do a sex change. This is wrong. Let's talk to Dr. Helen Weberly. She is a private GP who specialises in supporting and treating people who identify as transgender, and Jason is one of her patients. Uh, how do you react to that, that this is just children and they're likely to change their mind. I think it's really important um, when we're looking at the diagnosis of transgender in somebody um, to look at the whole history. And we can hear from Jason and his mum that this has been something that's been going on from really as early as they can remember or as, as early as Jason could express any kind of gender identity. And when we see children who have identified as a different gender to their biological sex, which is what transgender is, so they identify as a different gender to their biological sex, and that identification is continuous, it's persistent, Consistent, it's insistent and it's and those feelings are very strong and they don't go away so this is very different to uh, expressions of sexuality in, in later teenage uh, children what sort of assessment would you go through with the child and the family before agreeing to effectively pause puberty which involves an injection every month okay so um, the injections are every month and then every three months um, the Assessments are, are multi, multifactorial. You have to check that uh, the person is physically fit and well, mentally fit, and there's no mental illness clouding in, in any judgment or diagnosis. You have to make sure that the child is psychologically well um, and not being influenced by anybody else on the outside to either have treatment or not have treatment. Mm -hmm. So there's a very multifactorial assessment that needs to go on um, before giving anybody any, any kind of treatment. Mm -hmm. The Tavistock Clinic, which is the NHS, the, the NHS's only identity, gender identity clinic in the UK, said the youngest child they've ever given these hormones to to pause puberty is ten and a half. Jason started this at nine. I'm, I'm in danger of sounding like a stock record, but it is really important. Nine is so young. 
You have to consider what, we do, what happens if we don't do it. So if we don't give Jason, as he's entering the early stages of puberty, mm. if we don't give him the right treatment, he then develops breasts, which will never go away. Uh, he starts menstruating, which can be very, um, very uncomfortable for a boy. Um, and you have to look at that in the long-term picture. Jason and his mum were talking about surgery then. If you, t if you speak to older trans boys and trans guys, they are talking about top surgery, which mm. means cutting off the breasts that developed during puberty. So with someone like Jason, what we're doing actually by by getting the treatment right and early intervention, which is what the Americans and the Netherlands um, clinic model is like, by early intervention we're actually pre pre protecting Jason from having unnecessary surgery in the future. How do you know it's right though? You said by getting the treatment right. How do you know it's right? How does anyone know that anything is right? I wish we had a blood test, a brain scan, something like that, that would make things so easy. We don't. You know, the blood test in Jason is the same in it as the rest of his class. Mm. The brain scan is the same in the rest of his class. So what we do is we listen to Jason, we listen to Jason's whole life, not just one snapshot of it, his yeah. whole life, and, and the stories that his family, his teacher, those are close to him, that tell us. And that helps to inform us what's right for Jason. The NHS won't treat children with cross-sex hormones until they are the age of 16. That's the official guidance. But you have treated children younger than that. Why? I think um, my clinic model, which again fits with what the Americans and the Netherlands clinic model is, is a very individualised care. So um, I think rather than fitting an age on something, I think you know, each person should be assessed, continually assessed as they're going along, and then when it's right to make those decisions and start that treatment, that is the right time. Not forgetting that if we leave Jason now till he's 16, um, he's going to be one of the very late puberty children in his class to go through puberty because that's what the cross-sex hormones will do. They will make him go through his male puberty. Right, okay. Um, and just to be clear to our audience, once you start taking those cross-sex hormones, the changes to the child or young person are permanent? They are permanent, yeah. 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 That is if it. Jason's voice breaks, if his um, facial hair starts growing, you know, those things will, will not go away. Mm. Another criticism which has been made is that there, are, there is too much emphasis on children or young people being one gender or another if you go down the line of having this kind of treatment. And for some, as they grow older, they'd rather not be identified as either gender. I think it's, 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 an inter it's a hard concept to get your head around, mm. but biological sex is definitely one or the other. You either have female genitals or you have male genitals. Your gender is much more on a spectrum. And if you, if, if you ask a lot of people, which I've, just, I've done a survey just recently of 650 people, ask them how their gender identifies, and there is a big spread. Um, uh, and there are people in the middle which we currently um, refer to as non-binary. So those people in the middle, they either feel that they're not male and not female, or they feel they're both, both male and both female. So we're beginning to understand that gender identity is a real spectrum of feeling, rather than a binary system where you are either completely male or completely female. OK, let me read you this message. It's from Lee on Facebook. Thank you for the way you handle the transgender issue today. My son is female to male, transgender. We told everyone everything from the start. It took away the gossiping, the silly questions, and we found out who our real friends are. Within a couple of weeks, it wasn't an issue. People had moved on. I don't agree with what my son's doing, but I support him as he's still my child and I love him and I pray for him to make the right choices. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr Helen Weberly.